Jody Reinhouse again with the Reinhouse Report. I was abruptly cut off by my computer. It turned on me. Part 2, Utility Belt. Why you should have one. Let's see if it cuts off on me again. I'm almost done anyhow, it doesn't matter. Survivalist Belt Kit Out. Uh, I left off under duress because my computer decided to cut off there. Talking about the Hobbesian state of nature and why a person would have this kind of stuff. And I, and, I, and I made a list, you know, storms, hurricanes, uh, some kind of a total war scenario, uh, the breakdown of centralized government, whether it's because of a natural disaster, because of a war, etc. But a breakdown of nat but a breakdown of government slash a natural disaster that leaves people literally like in a Hobbesian anarchist esque state of nature, you know, the Hobbesian state of nature. And I think of uh, Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans after. Uh, after Hurricane Katrina, those guys were in there for you know, the people who were stranded, tens of thousands, thousands. A lot of people got killed, a lot of people got hurt because every, the centralized government broke down because the rich people left, people who could left. I mean, there's some poor people that got out too, but again, you can't, New Orleans is a large city and not everyone can get out. And a lot of people don't take this kind of stuff seriously, which is all the more reason to have this kind of gear. Uh, but hurricanes break down a centralized government. A natural disaster that leaves people literally in a Hobbesian state of nature um, without a centralized government. That's why Hobbes argued for a, uh, you know, a form of a centralized government that would secure people from living. And let me make sure I'm getting this quote right, making sure but actually pulling up my phone and, and checking. But let me see if I have my memory. Thomas Hobbes. Um, Thomas Hobbes. Thomas Hobbes. Life is short and brutish. According to Yale Hobbes blog, in Hobbes' memorable description, life outside society would be solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. But Hobbes' theory did not end there. He wanted to find a way out of such an undesirable situation. Hobbes's description of life outside of a society, a centralized government, would be, quote, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. So the lifespan now in America for like men and women, like I think men, it's like late 70s, early 80s, and I think women, it's like early 80s, mid 80s. Average lifespan, that would probably like drop in half. But uh, so... Um, those are some reasons, uh, like a prolonged postman ask, uh, the postman with Kevin Costner, that kind of a scenario where, because uh, after a couple of weeks go by, your neighbors are going to start to form up into like essentially militias waiting for the government. They're not going to know what's going on necessarily, especially if the electrical grid and cell phone towers and uh, things like that were hit, maybe an EMP attack or a cyber attack with China, Russia, and uh, non-state entities, terrorists are perfecting, you know, how to, how to hack into that. And I'm, I bet they already know how. But you know what? We know how to do the same to theirs. So if a, but if a total war broke out, we would both do it to each other, probably. And then the armed groups would start showing up once the food began to run out. All right. Well, now what? Obviously, in the state of nature, each man for himself. You know, your neighbors. My neighbors, they have a lot of guns. That's great. Uh, they're going to come rolling around and they can make up a lie. Let's say it's been a month and you've had no contact with the outside world because even radio frequencies have been jammed at this point. Um, people are just worn down. They're fatigued. They're hungry. They don't know. They're confused. They don't know what to do. Uh, and then a group of 20 dudes rolls up into your little town. It's, uh, I don't know, north, northern Florida, like Pensacola or something. And they're like, yeah, we were invaded and... Um, New York and Washington DC and all that's been captured. We're retreating. In reality, they just, they're from like Kansas and they took this as an opportunity. They didn't get hit, just the East Coast. So they took this as an opportunity to f come on over here and like loot and plunder, which is why a person needs to be armed or have some kind of protection. I prefer something that's relatively innocuous and that's not gonna kill you like this. Bear spray will do the trick. Um, let me see here. I'll take this off. You're going to want to have this, though, if you are in a, some kind of a war zone. You don't want to get shot as you're maneuvering. You're going to want to take off anything bright 
this is kind of just kind of like a placeholder. I see the double Prussian flags because um, uh, my descendants are from Prussia. And by, by descendants are from Prussia, I mean like their birth certificates say Prussia, not Germany. And, and also from Scandinavia. Deus Volt, it's not racist. Uh, that's Latin for God wills it. I believe uh, this is what the Pope, before the First Crusade occurred, which is in response to Islamic aggression that had been happening, which I believe included the sacking of Sicily at one point. So the Pope was like, God wills it, do this crusade. And so, and I'm, I'm Catholic, so I just like it. I, I think it looks cool. Deus Volt. Deus Volt. Problem is it's been hijacked by the far right. So now if I wear that, people are going to think, oh, I'm a racist. Oh, I'm a racist. You're going to want to have basic supplies. Pack them up in an ammo can. This is for a 30 caliber machine gun. Batteries, fire, food, water. Ammunition, communications gear, electronics, two-way radios, you want rechargeable battery packs that are charged and ready. And every year you have to go through this and you have to update it. Miscellaneous electronics, uh, wiring, stuff like that. You're going to need um, ammunition. You need a lot of ammunition, mainly shotgun ammunition. Once it, gets, once it really comes down to it, things are going to break down to where uh, the barter system is going to come into effect. People are going to start to barter. They're going to start to barter. Um, a couple of things to keep in account because a lot of this for me is simply because I live in a hurricane zone. And the last hurricane, the last two hurricanes were kind of like really bad for us. So uh, ever since then, I've been taking this real seriously. Um, and then the Battle of Berkeley, when that stuff started happening, I was like, what's going to happen? Is this going to happen here in my hometown? So, and then just basic home defense. I mean, you have to be careful with whatever you have. For one thing, in terms of an emergency, you're going to want this. Obviously, an air, an air horn. I don't know if I said this or if I mentioned this or not. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I, I'd appreciate it. I mean, you, you need to have these types of things because this is, you know, Hobbesian state of nature uh, type of scenario. But, I mean, you, you, you need to have these things. You just need to treat them for what they are. You know, these are, uh, you know, these these are weapons. You need to make sure that they're that they're not loaded, and that they're on safe, and that they're always kept in a holster. And you obviously want to try your best. I'm gonna have to use them. So and then you can get this kind of stuff, which will break people's bones. If you hit them in the head, it'll kill them. And you always want to represent, Barriga. This is a good hickory stick. It's cheap on Amazon. It's badass. Keep this by the front door. So just basic. If someone comes to your door to get in. If you've been in the ghetto, bop, bop, bop. But I have a better one than this by the front door. Get that. Um, just in case you need it, you have your uh, tomahawk. This I have utility axes, uh, hand axes, things like that. I have all that. So those are packed away in go bags, and my go bags are heavy. So I didn't want to, you know, it's, they're all the way over there. I don't want to have to do that. Like I said, you know, I'm kind of, I have a little illness going on. So just a basic, this is meant to, you swing it, you rip into some of the back of somebody's shoulder. And then as you can see, it's it's hooked. So then you rip forward. So you, you swing it, sheep, you hook someone's shoulder, and then you right, you just pull it right next to you, right back to you. It's going to rip up the tendons, the muscle soft tissue all that and then on the end here you can cut wire supposedly whatever this is meant to hit somebody in the back of the head with and kill them it's fucking right it, excuse my language it's, it's razor sharp so you're going to want to again be very very careful even though it's not a gun that doesn't matter it's a very sharp instrument of war literally they before the invention of gunpowder this is the kind of stuff people use on the battlefield i'll be a, i'll 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 be it it was sturdier you're going to want to have a basic survivalist knife you, need, you don't need to go crazy with it. The cool thing about this is you have a handle that can hold a whole bunch of stuff in it. And it is a viable knife. You got a good saw on there. Decent blade. You have to sharpen it once you get it. Handle not such a great grip. You need to be careful about that. You're going to have to do a little bit of work to make yourself a good grip on there. But the main thing is this is in a sheath. And if I pop off, if I unscrew this back, I got everything I need in terms of being able to do basic stuff like make a fire 
Because like I'm saying, when people think of like survivalist stuff, they think of like crazy people who think we're going to be invaded. I don't think that's going to happen. But where I live, like I said, hurricane zone, I need to be mindful of this kind of crap. And if you stop and think about it, what's more likely, being hungry or being attacked by a militia? So, but you need to be prepared anyhow. If you need to hack through, if, if, if you need to disperse, to displace from a populated area and go into a jungly, subtropic-esque forest. Oh, goodness, again. For the sake of your health. Wear something like this. I can't tell you how many times I've been in my backyard smoking smoking cigarettes and having uh, stuff fall on me from the freaking tree, the Java plum tree. So, if you need to do hacking... This is a basic machete, and you get it for like five or ten bucks. This one's real old. This one's vintage. And again, these carabiner clips, again, with the belt, if you are having to do this kind of stuff, you just clip it. Or if you're a righty, if you're right-handed, you just clip it. So that way when you're going through this bush, you can pull this out, and you can hack at the, at the thick foliage. Because where I live, it's messed up. I don't like it here. I want to leave, but I can't afford it right now. But that's why the carabiner hook is so important because you can so quickly and easily adjust it to fit any kind of mole system. If you, if you Google that, M O, I think it's M O L L E, M O L L E. That's the United States' combat system. It was developed, I believe, by the United States. Now it's, it's so good that it's used around the world. It's just a series of hooks and stuff. On my uh, part one video, I showed it with my vest. Uh, you're going to want to have armor because uh, the last hurricane we had was messed up and I had to take my dog out and uh, the hurricane, we actually had a tornado and it blew down our back fence. I had to take her out and I wasn't going to leave her loose. So I had to take her out in the storm with debris flying at like 60, 50, 60 miles an hour. God was watching out for me. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, so everything was okay. But if a rock would have hit me at traveling 30 or 40 miles an hour, it could hit me. It could kill me or put me in a coma. So I have that, um, and then the Battle of Berkeley stuff started happening. So then I kind of got like, is this going to come here to my to where I live? So, that, but but again, this is dual purpose because I was using this too to block shit when I was outside having a maneuver. Because let's say a, a gutter system goes down. Let's say you have sandbag a sandbag setup and it gets knocked over or messed up. Let's say you have a ground based gutter system that needs to be uh, dumped out real quick. Just have this on one hand and just kind of use this for your face. But if you're in like the Battle of Berkeley, this is a squeegee stick. This is a squeegee stick. It's made out of plastic, which is better to like in the in the police report. I don't recommend doing any of this, but in the police report, it'll say it was a plastic squeegee stick as opposed to a wooden hickory stick. No real need for it. It was a bat. Officer, this is just a squeegee I found, and the handle fell off. All right, all right. Whatever, it's plastic. Still considered a deadly weapon, though. I'm going to sign off because this is part two of a series. I'm almost finished, though. So, survivalist kit out for dangerous situations in 21st century America. Please subscribe. This is Jody Reinhouse, the Reinhouse Report. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, yeah, I'll put up part three soon.